Hi guys, Michael here. Today we'll learn about Fuxa. Fuxa is a web-based process visualization software. So that means you can build these polished looking dashboards to monitor and control processes. If you didn't install it yet, I would advise you to watch the installation video. You can find this video in the right hand corner. As an example, we will use a traffic light programmed in SFC. First off, we open the OpenPLC editor. Please make sure to update to the latest version. You can also find a video on how to do this in the right hand corner. I will now open a program I have written in the PLC language SFC. I will put the project in the description. Here you can see the schematic of the hardware. I will also put a list of the components in the description below. I already covered how this program works in another video. Next we will change the code to run natively with the Arduino Uno. To do this, we must make sure we use the correct locations. We can find the physical addresses in the documentation, so we change the locations in the software as so. I already made a video about another visualization software in the past named Scala BR. The main difference between Scala BR and Fuxa is the more modern user interface in Fuxa. And secondly, Fuxa is a lot less hard to set up and does not require a virtual box to run on Windows. After changing the addresses, we will write the code to the Arduino. First, ensure you know the correct COM port to which the Arduino is connected. A quick tip, you can also use the device manager to locate the Arduino. In my case, I use an Arduino clone and I recognize my Arduino by CH340 chip in the description. Ensure you enable the Modbus serial because this will be how the Arduino communicates with Fuxa. Then press upload and wait until the program is loaded to the Arduino. If you just installed or updated OpenPLC, it can take some time. After uploading the program to the Arduino, the traffic light should run. The button enables the traffic light to go quickly to a red light. Next, we will start programming in Fuxa. But first, we must install the Modbus serial onto Fuxa. We do this by searching node and opening the node.js command prompt. In here, we type npm install Modbus serial. I already installed this. Then we run Fuxa with the bad script we made in the install video. Next, we will go to the web address. I made a convenient shortcut on my Chrome home screen. In Fuxa, we go to the Editor tab. We click on Options and then we click on Plugins. Here we have to enable Modbus Serial. Then we go to Connections and add a new Modbus Serial connection. Make sure the Arduino is connected to your PC. If everything is done correct, you see this green icon. The next step is to add the device tags to Fuxa. We first start by adding the outputs of the traffic light. These outputs are written in the coil status register. After adding the tags, you can immediately monitor the values. However, it can cause a little bit of confusion because output QX 0.0 will have address 1 and output QX 0.1 will have address 2 and so forth. Then we go to the editor to start programming on our screen. First, you can change the view properties to your liking. I have a large screen, so I set the dimensions to 1920 by 1080 pixels. Backgrounds in industrial applications are pretty dull to ensure important messages stand out to the operator. I will now start making the screen. The user interface is pretty intuitive and we will just fast forward this part. I made two sidewalks and we will use in this example a one-way street, so you only need one traffic light.
We will also add some buttons later on, but first we will start programming the traffic light. We do this by drawing a circle in a gray color and over this circle we will layer on an exact same circle in a red color. Then we will program in Fuxa this red circle to be visible only when the tag is 1. We do this by selecting the red circle, going to interactivity and adding an action. First we choose the red light tag and we also have to select the bit mask. In this case it is just a boolean so we choose 1. If the tag is 0 we hide the red circle. Then we need to add another action where we show the tag when the red light is on. We repeat this step for all the other lights. We create the always visible circles and set the dynamic circles on top. One way to check out the screen is to run it. You can now see the traffic light updating. There is a slight delay that we will try to fix. We go to connections and try to change the polling rate. We will first try setting the rate to 200 milliseconds. Another way to go to the traffic light screen is to go to the home screen. Now we see the lamps are always on, so 200 milliseconds is too fast for the Arduino Uno to handle. We go back to connections and change the time to 1 second. This is still 2 times as quickly as before. Most tags I encounter in an industrial application are also set to this value. So now we have a smaller delay. The next thing we will do is add extra features to the traffic light. First we will add a button to activate the always green mode. This is useful for emergency services to pass through. We do this by adding a slider button and connecting the tag HMI green mode. I now realize I still have to add the tag, so I call it HMI green and because it's output QX 0.3 it will be on address 4 in the Modbus protocol. I programmed it as an output because you cannot write inputs in the Modbus protocol. Now I can connect the slider to the HMI green tag and we can test if this works. When activating the slider the lights will go green and stay there for as long as the mode is active. I have now added some text to make it more clear what the slider does. As the last step in the tutorial, we will add the pedestrian button to the HMI. It can be helpful for the operator so we can monitor if the button is stuck. For example, we will visualize the status of the button with a circle. Next, we have to add the tag. In this case, the button is an input, so choose the digital input register. The address looks weird in the UI, but the value changes accordingly when pressing the button, 
so I'm sure it works. We now continue to work on the pedestrian button. Knowing the button is an input is essential, so you know you cannot change it when using Modbus. You should never use a button in the HMI to visualize a Modbus input. When we run the screen, we see that the buttons react as intended in the HMI. We now can polish things up to have our final screen. In the following video, I will show you how you can access the HMI screens on your mobile device. If you don't want to miss the video, you will have to make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm almost at a thousand subscribers, so please help me reach this goal. Also a great thanks to my supporters. I will see you in the next video.